Israel lives, a modern Jewish nation growing in its ancient biblical homeland. The architect of this epic revival was David Ben-Gurion. I would describe him as the greatest statesman and the most unusual one in the annals of Jewish life. This Herculean task spanned nearly 50 years and exacted a high cost on Ben-Gurion's personal life. He remained a very lonely person. David Ben-Gurion was wedded not so much to Paula, his wife, but to the national cause. Inspired, fearless, unpredictable, Ben-Gurion was a modern-day Moses who led the Jews back to their ancient promised land, making history. A portrait of David Ben-Gurion. Next. May 15, 1948, the combined Arab armies of Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq roll forward in a coordinated assault. Their target, the newly born nation of Israel. Only hours before, the Jewish state had celebrated independence. Now, its sons and daughters face an army primed for a bloodbath. The Arab strike force includes tanks, fighter planes, and 135,000 soldiers. Some 45,000 Israeli men and women, outnumbered three to one, line up against them. During the ensuing months, the Israelis push back the Arab invasion. And by the spring of 1949, the fighting was over. Israel had won its war of independence. The mastermind of Israel's defense and the guiding light in its birth as a nation was a short, stocky 62-year-old with grandfatherly tufts of white hair. David Ben-Gurion. I would describe him as the greatest statesman and the most unusual one in the annals of Jewish life. He didn't look for popularity. He didn't look for applause. Once he made up his mind, that's it. In the hours before the Arab invasion, it was David Ben-Gurion who had declared the independence of Israel. For Ben-Gurion, it was the crowning moment in a campaign that had lasted some five decades. Ben-Gurion had one great ideal in his life, to build a Jewish independent state in the land of Israel. The rest were passing consideration. 